Welcome, Mark, to Metalalium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Cardashep, this new album, Liminal Right, and other things related, and other things related to the metal world. And starting with a, with a question, how have you been during these crazy times? We are ending a pandemic, I think so. We are, we're starting a, an award in Europe. So who knows what happened in the next couple of years? Ellen Invasion, the machines takes the power. <laughs> so no, who knows really? It's a very, very crazy times. Yeah, it's nuts. You know, I'm good. I'm good, man. I have been, things have been so busy and so crazy. And thankfully, you know, for us, we've been really busy because we've had a lot of really cool opportunities. But uh, yeah, the 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 pandemic has been crazy and I feel bad for everybody. It's it's really hit, but things things are good. I'm ready for them to calm down, but they're they're busy, but good. We're, we're blessed to have so many opportunities. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. So one question that I, when I saw the first time, but this is the first time that I hear the band, especially this new album, Liminal Ray, then I hear all complete discography and things, Peri But um, one thing that captured my attention, what's the name? Why are you decide to call the band Kardashev? Well, like Nicholas Kardashev, because it's, sure. uh, that's Nicholas Kardashev. And because they 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 create a, a technology a technology evolution with civilization, they he, he proposed an uh, like astrophysic methods into the 1964. That's amazing for that. So what are you decide to what are you what did you decide to put Kardashev like the name of the band? Sure. So when we first got started, it was around 2009 2010. And, you know, space metal was really popular back then, <laughs> you know, outer space and aliens and gent was a big thing. And we liked all those concepts, but most of the time it was either space aliens are going to kill us or, you know, we live in a dystopic future or it was like so philosophical that you couldn't tell what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, we were like, well, what if we talked about the future? And, but did it positively, like maybe humans make a lot of good choices and maybe things get better and maybe we're okay. Very Star Trek, you know? Um, yeah. And so, you know, Kardashev's, uh, Nikolai Kardashev's theory basically talks about the advancement, you know, measuring the advancement of a species based on their technology and their energy usage. And that just kind of lined up and we were like, can we just use somebody's last name as our, our, uh, our band name? And then we were like, I think we can. So we just kind of did, <laughs> that was that. Okay, okay, okay. So, and um, what is the exact meaning of the liminal right? Because I try to, I try to find some aspects and some, and some way I try to say what, are, what, what is the exact meaning of the liminal right? Because very, a very interesting name from a new album. Yeah, well, I'm glad you think it's interesting. It's, it's a good <laughs> one. I, well, well, we think it's a good one, but um, so you know, something that's liminal or a, something that has liminality involves passage a change right so it's a it's a point of of moving through something and you know a rite is basically a ritual so you could kind of think of it as like a ritual of transformation or change and the the actual ritual or rite that happens at the end of the album is when unfortunately the main character goes from you know having a somewhat healthy mind and somewhat of a grip on reality and then moves into giving into pain and regret and sorrow and remorse and guilt. And he, the, the rite or the ritual is him burning down the house with him inside of it. And that's what happens in the track beyond the passage of embers. That's when the liminal rite actually happens. And the album is named after that action that he takes. Mm, okay. And who is in the cover of, because with these aspects, you told me about this, uh, this event now the card Nicolas Nicholas Kardashev name, but when I see the cover art, it's very difficult to relate everything because you explain mm. something different, the, the name of the band, and now the cover art. So how how do you how did you find the connections between the name, the name of the album, the music, especially one well, the music is very easy because it's, it's more progressive, this this stuff, but with the cover art, because this cover art is more classic stuff, like the like more well, like the well, like the classic stuff of the art. It's not like, yeah. uh, as you said, it's more space metal. It's more classic stuff. Yeah, great question. So this album, first and foremost, breaks away from the space and the sci-fi. We don't we don't really write that content as much anymore. Um, but it's we've kept the name because the the spirit is still there. But we haven't written about like space and sci-fi since the almanac. Um, 
the character on the front of Liminal Right, that's actually the main character in the album. So the album follows this old man who goes back to his childhood home and unfortunately, you know, has a bit of a mental breakdown. And that is the character. And throughout the art, you can see him in distressed postures, you know, holding his face, looking tired and, and remorseful. And you can see his mind sort of dissipating out of the top of his head. And that represents both his um, mental, his, that, that essentially represents his mentally deteriorating state. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Other aspect that I that, that I see in a lot of reviewers, especially of this new album, the previous one, is that the many reviewers said that this you play as a as some kind of mix of atmospheric, deathcore, post metal, this kind of stuff. But according to my experience, because I hear a lot of metal during more than three years, so yeah, for me, yeah. you have play more than a progressive metal band, and you use other styles to put some some sausage into your music. This kind of stuff, but the people think that it's, it's necessary to attach with with one line. So if a car does it plays progressive, atmospheric, death, corpus, uh, amazing death metal band. This is a, 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 a very interesting question because how do you define exactly the 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 music of the Kardashev? Because for me, it's progressive metal, but for you, perhaps you have another kind of label. But the reviewers, as I said, has a lot of tax into there. Yeah, that's a really great question. So I think progressive metal is is a good way to to describe us. Although, you know, progressive metal is a really large umbrella. And you're right, we do have kind of a weird culmination of sounds. And part of that is because um, we all bring different things to the table. And also, you know, sometimes we don't actually listen to metal very much because it's our job and you need to take a break. So we'll write songs without having listened to much metal for a couple years. So we're a little bit out of the trend. Um, the word that we use to describe it is, is death gaze. Cause it kind of, it's like kind of death metal. And even though it doesn't have like direct shoegaze moments, it carries a lot of the atmospheric elements of it. We, we, when we're thinking about our production, we'll sometimes think about how shoegaze, takes big washing moments and we'll say, okay, how can we apply that to metal? So if somebody was to call us progressive metal, I wouldn't argue the point. I would say like, yeah, sure. Um, the word that we use is, is death gaze. And it's, it's not just us, but um, I don't know of a whole lot of other bands using that, that genre tag, but there are, there are a few for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so how do you see the, the evolve, the evolution from peri peripety to this, or peripety from this liminal red because when I when I read for the first time peripety I think I I don't know why I try I relate with periphery from the from from the other band from US because it's very the, the name is very related I think so <laughs> yeah. so how how do you see the evolution of the band since peripety to this liminal right yeah so you know we've our main focus has always just been writing music that we would enjoy hearing you know, and writing music that works for all of us. As we've written, we've continually found a sound that we're all comfortable with. And it's a sound that's very open, very atmospheric, very sorrowful, but very hopeful at the same time. So really, you know, we don't think a lot about the audience that we're writing for too much. We always just write music that makes us feel soulful. Um, and that's kind of how we found our way here. And that's probably what we'll continue doing. And who knows what the next album will sound like. I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, other aspect that, that I see it into your, into your career is that you start in Peripety with subliminal group records. And now you are under one of the biggest and oldest, oldest, um, labels, the metal labels around the world that is metal blade now. So how do you how do you how do you receive this well how do you receive this achievement for the band because it's it's a great one to, to belong to this to Metal Blade and because a lot of bands around the world trying to belong Metal Blade to send a lot of materials there to them so how do you see this great accomplish for you Yeah um you know it's been really wild uh we were on subliminal groove records for a little while that was a really small record label um that that helped us in in you know many ways that's part of the reason we were able to play uh uk tech fest in 2015. um but eventually the label closed down and we didn't have a label for a long time 
after we released the bearing of shadows metal blade reached out to us and said hey we we like your music we like your online presence and we'd like to work with you um and that was a pretty big moment for us because like you said metal blade is one of the biggest and oldest metal record labels that exists mm -hmm. but also we were very happy to be independent um so it, we were very excited and we none of us expected it but we were also able to go in with a calm mind and say like okay well what does the offer look like what do they want to do for us and what do we need to do in return and as we spoke with them we found that they had a whole lot to offer and they've I can't even describe how much they've helped us. It's been monumental in, in our achievements so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, I think, and I, and, I, and I see one thing about the cover art into the Peripeti to Disney one. You have a, a very, um, well, a big color, big, big color colors because you you decide to do this a, black, a white one into the Peripeti and now you are a dark one. So how do you, what do you decide to, to change completely extreme the colors because white from black black is like the opposite of the colors yeah uh you know we've always liked simpler color palettes and that was that was an idea from our original bassist his name was chris um and he is a very very well-known very successful painter who sells his paintings all over the world and he uh he always advised us that a simpler color palette was the way to go and we agree with that and we've continued carrying that forward now this album does have a little bit of a different color palette but we feel like it still kind of stays in line um and it's just it's kind of our aesthetic at this point to to keep our color palettes simple um and to only use colors that are going to matter um beyond that yeah it's just what we like you know <laughs> i don't know it's just what we like Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So talking about this, well, especially for this new album, Liminal, right? So you see a lot of bands are releasing singles, videos, albums, EPs. Now it's very difficult to get attention for the reviewers, fans, people, etc., etc. And also the digital platforms is, I think, in, in besides to they get easy, the music's more complicated because when you see the release in the Spotify, iTunes, like that, you see a lot of artists. It's, it's very easy to loss into this in, in their in the database. So how, how how what is the biggest difference that Liminal Right has to 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 see to see much better compared to the a lot of releases around the world because it's very difficult now to get attention for the people. Yeah. I think one of the biggest differences is that we have Metal Blade to help us. You know, their network is massive. They're con they're connected everywhere. And so they have had a huge impact with setting up these interviews, for example, and and uh, getting us distribution in different countries. And uh, we've seen our listener base in the past month over double. Um, the amount of people that are paying attention to us is, is over double. As far as standing out from other bands, um, I think that we just sound pretty different. Um, there's a lot of really great music that's releasing recently, um, but I think that we just sound pretty different. And so that catches people's ears. Um, I know that that's kind of like what every band says, but <laughs> you know, I feel like that's kind of true in this case. Yes, yes, yes. I know one question that I love, uh, uh, musicians like you, you are involved in a lot of styles into your music because Liminal Right has metal, extreme metal, has post-metal, has progressive metal, a lot of metal scene to there. And for that reason, do you think, do you, do you hear about a lot about this, this concept, about, about this synesthesia? Hmm. Synesthesia. I'm, you know, I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Okay. I will explain <laughs> it. No. So yeah. you, synesthesia is when a person see colors, when they hear music. See colors, oh. they smell taste, they they smell taste, so they smell flavors, this kind of stuff. So and relating with these synesthesia aspects and with a lot of elements into the music of Kardashev. So what kind of odors, smells, and tastes and colors that the, the, the listeners will find into this liminal ride? I that's a fun question. I get it. Yeah, that's a fun question. Um, so I think with liminal, right, it would be a lot of very damp smells, like like uh, a very damp old room, you know, that smells kind of musky, kind of moldy, kind of mildewy, and then a lot of more um, harsh, 
harsh smells like burning wood smoke um you know uh like if you've ever been out in the forest after it rains like that really heavy dusty rain smell so it would be a lot of good smells but mixed good smells and like flavors in the air but mixed with a lot of moldy musty kind of rotting smells at the same time mm -hmm. <laughs> okay 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 now as i said in the first question we will talk about other matters in the, because we spoke about the band the meaning of the name the meaning of the, the album the cover arts so now we will focus in as i uh talking about the digital platforms because now it's the great the, the, the great way to hear music it's it's obviously but with these new forms of hearing music, the new generations prefers to do the playlist with one, two, three songs. Now the people doesn't listen all all song from an album, just listen one, two, three songs, especially the singles. It's, they, uh, well, talking about people for 15 or 20 years old, because I'm for the one and I prefer to hear all, all, all album because that's why I loved your, your last album. And so for that, so what is your opinion about the digital platforms or the digital era? Is good or is bad for the music? And why the albums doesn't have the same impact compared to the 60s, no, 50s, no, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 90s? Uh, because I think now we are returning in a cyclic time to the 40s and 50s when many people just hear singles. Yeah. You know, the first part of the question, I look at things like this very neutrally. Um, I very much, I don't really think of these things as like being good or bad. I think of it more as this is where we are, you know, um, this is the state of things. Uh, and so I think that there are a lot of positives and a lot of negatives with digital platforms. I think it's amazing that people have a lot of accessibility to music and they can enjoy music in a lot of different ways. And certainly it has helped us get a bigger bigger net of people than we ever would have had before. Um, I do think, you know, in the digital age, part of the reason that people aren't listening to whole albums as much is because we are very used to treating art like a, like a, like a buffet of enjoyment versus non-enjoyment. I remember I'm only, uh, I'll be 34 pretty soon, but when I was a kid, we still listened to full albums and it was it was a lot more about discovery you would hear a sound and you wouldn't know if you liked it yet it would take some time you'd listen to the song four or five times and over time you'd learn to like it or you'd learn that you hate it but you know today if you don't like something you just swipe 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 yeah. swipe and you never come back to it yes. um so i think that that's that's the reason uh why people don't listen to a lot of uh we view art as something that's curated for our enjoyment not for something not as something that we can discover um and i think that's the most insight i have on it you know <laughs> i think that's about as far as my limited brain capacity can can really go on that one hmm. okay 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 so returning to the returning to the Lee album so what uh, what what kind of well, what are the future plans that the band has for this new liminal rate perhaps a north american tour perhaps more beaters upcoming or perhaps who knows um not european or perhaps a latin american tour for the next couple of years who knows it's possible now sure you know right now we don't have any plans to tour or play festivals or even play any shows and part of the reason for that is we're extremely busy you know i run my own business i have a kid that's going to be born in september and our drummer runs a business and has three kids uh our bassist is in another incredible band called holy fun anybody who likes Kardashev should check out holy fun they're very different but you'll probably like holy fun or vice versa um mm -hmm. so we just don't have the time or resources to tour um you know we're, we're a little bit later in the game for that um if the best like if the tour of a lifetime got offered to us or like the the festival of a lifetime we'd probably take the opportunity but honestly, we haven't earned that because we don't have extensive playing experience in the past five years. So nobody's gonna nobody's gonna give us this huge payout with these big bands. It's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, I think we're just going to focus on interacting with fans, showing a lot of gratitude, um, and really kind of helping the album go as far as it can. And once once this album has sort of lulled, we'll just start writing the next one. Well, well, now that's the, that's one of the we are ending the the interview. So. 
Well, Mark, the sad times are right, but this interview, I hope you enjoyed this one as <laughs> I did. And thank you, thank you for your time. It was a, it was a pleasure to talk with you. As I said, I love I we did we published the interview with the police review on Metalarium. It's a great, it's a great start, it's a great second album for the band. I really, really I did my pre-order. I have I hope so will arrive soon. So um, perhaps do you want to add something to your I think your new Latin American fans because you are the second album, you are starting a great career for me, especially. And and Metalarium followers. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it, it is interesting to see the different parts of the world where we're gaining more fans. And, and from what we're seeing, we, we are getting a little bit more a little bit more fan base in Latin America, which is really cool. Up until now, it's mostly been Germany and the United States. Um, so hello to all of you. Thank you so much for for listening. And yeah, I mean, I'm just so thankful to everybody who gives us some time. And, and you know, thank you for for this interview. I appreciate your patience with me being a little bit late. Sorry again about that. Um, but this is great. I really appreciate you and everybody else who decides to give us even a small amount of your time that that is massive and, and it means a lot.